Welcome back to Dark Corners Streaming. We have heard the chimes at midnight. A labour of love spanning decades, Orson Welles' Chimes at Midnight, which is available on Amazon Prime, is the culmination of a lifelong obsession and one of cinema's most vital takes on Shakespeare. Whittled down from a five and a half hour stage play, originally planned for Wells Mercury Theatre Company, Chimes at Midnight incorporates dialogue from five different Shakespeare plays, predominantly Henry IV parts one and two. Not just condensing, but re-editing and moving the narrative to orbit the character of Sir John Falstaff. How now? Who picked me pocket? The drunken father figure of Prince Hal, embodying Hal's baser urges such that breaking from him can represent the prince's evolution into Henry V. On its release, reviews were mixed, and it's only with time that the film has gained a reputation as Wells' late masterpiece, standing comfortably alongside his earlier triumphs. I'll say right away, I think this is a wonderful film, and one of the truest blendings of theatre and film. Not trying to surpass the so-called limitations of the stage, but reshaping them for the medium. There are theatrically long takes, and the performances are quite theatrical, but they are captured with the handheld camera of Edmund Richard and cut about in scattershot editing. This blending of traditions is most obvious in the formality of John Gielgud's scenes as Henry IV. Oh, that it could be proved that some night-tripping fairy had exchanged in cradle clothes our children where they lay. Occasionally recalling Wells' expressionist-styled Macbeth of 1948, another great film marred only by these Scottish accents. Weigh these static scenes against the pace and bawdy energy of the tavern where Hal and Falstaff mock the king and in so doing mock theatrical convention. I do not only marvel where thou spendst thy time. But this certainly isn't Wells mocking theatre, as even here Falstaff's fate is foreshadowed. Vanish, Club Jack and vanish. All the world. I do. I will. It is, I think, the energy that I most take away from this film. For all the tremendous advantages of modern equipment and effects, the ability to throw the camera where you want, when was the last time you saw a modern blockbuster with this riot of energy? The film's centrepiece is the Battle of Shrewsbury, one scene that was appreciated at the time for its portrayal of the battle as a bloody, bludgeoning chaos of part-time soldiers hacking at each other before dissolving into mud and exhaustion, with none of the heroic choreography or bravura camera work that makes so many cinematic battles so hard to believe in. How this world is given to lying. Still, the film's greatest joy is its touching narrative of ageing, both of Hal from boy to man and of Falstaff, losing a surrogate son and with it his own borrowed youth. I shall be sent for soon. Clearly, Wells identified with Falstaff. A goodly portly man, a face and a corpulent. Of a cheerful look, a pleasing eye, and a most noble carriage. I wonder if he also found moments in the play that seemed to relate to his career. Thou hast robbed me of my youth. And relationship with Hollywood. Thus ever did rebellion find rebuke. Made piecemeal on a low budget, the film has its rough edges, but... Only the sound really lets it down, and jarring though that sometimes is, it's not enough to dim its brilliance. Don't forget me when I'm gone. It's a moving film, but also one where you feel that the director's own enthusiasm bursts from the screen. Thanks for watching. Are you a fan of Chimes at Midnight? What other Shakespeare characters could be spun off into their own features? Let us know in the comments below.